Raindrops on orchids and whiskers on puppies. Bright copper blooms and their warm colored buddies. New growth and hope for the season ahead. These are a few of the things I don't dread. When they bloom out, when they grow well, then I don't feel sad. But then comes a time and the weather might change, so let's focus on the tour ahead. <laughs> Welcome, it's so good that you stayed through that. <laughs> Everything, any song can be applied to orchids. Thank you so much for being here. I have a few things I would love to share with you, while I still can. <laughs> So before it gets messy, and supposedly it is going to get messy, let's look at some blooms while they're still around. And before I have to do a small little bit of an orchid shuffle to protect some of the blooms I still have. I am going to open up this brief patio tour with the most spectacular looking Blatia striata bowl of all time, at least on my patio it is. I believe I counted 21 spikes. <laughs> It's just so pretty. This was gifted to me by Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents. I'm getting some wonderful detailed shots of the blooms as well. And I hope it's just a beautiful sight on the screen as it is in real life. But we have to leave this little bowl of goodness behind because there are other blooms that are vying for attention and other little details I would like to share with you. I could not make myself do it. My cymbidium is still in bloom, but I promise you that it will be done. I shall be cutting these spikes now that I've said it several times. And trust me, not just on videos, I've been telling myself that every single day since the last time I mentioned it to you. <laughs> and now that the older spikes are fading, it's not going to be as difficult. The newer spike, well, with one bud left to open, it's going to be a bit of a sacrifice, but needs must. I still have my fire stunk and bilier spike though. It is measuring a full meter in length. The tip of the spike isn't even opening up to show the buds yet. <laughs> Apparently, it's loving its life outside of its mask because, yes, oh, 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 that repot is still on the cards. But with my Dendrobium nobly variety Cooksonianum, another gift from Fernanda and Nathimento Orchids and Succulent in such spectacular bloom, I'm just going to forget all the upcoming projects that I have to do, which are heavy labor. <laughs> and they're going to kick my butt. But in the meantime, oh my goodness, this blooming is sensational. I counted several times. I keep coming up with 52 blooms. That is fine by me. That is a bloom for every week of the year that I've been taking care of this orchid. <laughs> Her two new growths from the winter are progressing absolutely beautifully and she's pushing another new growth at her base. So this orchid is rocking and rolling and growing. I'm just so thrilled. Smells of roses. It is very faint though, but again, if there's no sun around, well, some orchids just won't throw their fragrance if they're not in the sun. I know that feeling. But she's a wonderful representation of what we can expect as dendrobium season starts to kick off exciting time of year. The orchid that does not need any sun to be throwing any kind of fragrance around, that is my Dendrobium nobly no ID. Oh goodness me. We have not even opened 30% of our buds yet and it is powerful. It is intense. I love it. It's all freesia all over the place. This orchid <laughs> is a beast. Growing new growths throughout the winter, starting with new growths again already, pushing so many blooms I didn't even bother to count. There's a lot. They are even crowding each other out, which doesn't phase me at all because even those that are crowded at the base and don't really shine to their full potential, they still smell gorgeous. And with her fragrance of freesias, spring is well and truly in the air. I wish I could say that with whatever the forecast has in store for us in the coming week, the last week of March. And that is why we're doing this now, because end of March tour is probably not going to happen. And if it does, the patio is going to look marginally different. <laughs> it'll be short, it'll be brief, it won't be sweet. Now, with all my Tolumnia debacles, I want to share with you that three of my OG collection of Once Upon a Time 19, three that I am babying, still trying to get them to recover from the scale infestation. I've got a new growth coming on this one. I've got a new growth coming on this one. And... 
the new growth coming on this one but I think she's not going to make it given the circumstances and what she looks like with the fans behind the new growth. I don't have much hope for her unfortunately but you know we're gonna keep trying until it's all crispy crispy. So let's just leave that little sad Tulumnia and move on to another section of the patio which currently is Bao Chica. Wow wow! <laughs> Dendrobium berry odor. Not to be outdone with my Catlia Maxima. Ah, <sighs> big sigh. If you haven't seen my community post, you might want to check it out because ooh la la. Yes, the camera is doing the colors justice, but ooh la la, if you can't get enough of what you're seeing here, you can gawk at my community post about these two blooms that have recently opened of my Maxima next to my super pink Dendrobium Berry Oda as well. So we've got once again a beautiful bouquet of roses from the Maxima and she She's a little bit more bold in her fragrance than the nobly Cooksonia is, thankfully. Again, no sunshine to speak of. And berry odor is, oh my goodness, the perfume of this orchid. The honeysuckle, the molasses, the sugar, mouth-watering, delicious. So having feasted our eyes on a lot of pink, I hope you're not blinded by the psychedelic colors. <laughs> We're just gonna go and I'm gonna show you my Dendrobium Seraula because this orchid, of course, has been a little bit of a concern in my collection. I've been babying her. I've been hoping for her to bounce back. I mean, Dendrobiums are tough, but there's only so much, right? But look at her now. Ooh, she's coming onto herself. That garlic alcohol is working a treat and she's growing more roots at the base of the new growth to the left of the whole cluster of canes at the base there. Two more roots. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. So we're just gonna look back, another angle of a table where I normally have my rapiculus this time of year, but I'm very fearful for what's coming weather-wise, so they haven't been moved out to that staging area yet. But I wanted to show you two things on this table. Well, no, three things. But my Ascacentrum Ampuyathea Pink Dreamer to the right is in gorgeous bloom now thankfully. Two spikes, even though they're not like next to each other, but hey, I'll take two spikes no matter where you produce them. So we've got one up and one down. That is most unusual, but what is also very unusual is my Jumelia arborescence. This orchid blooms in June. Normally I only see spikes at the end, mid end of April, and this spike has been growing since the beginning of March. Trust me when I say, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I don't mind, but as long as you don't stall, I want my arborescence blooms. They are short-lived and I'm hoping for a wonderful blooming this season. This is a big surprise. It's very premature. Moving on swiftly, the third thing I wanted to show you on this table is why I'm a little bit in trepidation about what's to come because we have got the Sahara dust coming over us. It's in the air. Our air quality is so low. There is red alert in the area as well. You can't really see it unless you look at tables, unless you look at orchids. It's orange and if it starts to rain as is forecast, everything is going to be orange again. So I just wanted to show you that to back up what I was singing about right at the beginning of this video. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I will be the first one to be happy to admit that I'm wrong if what I think is coming is going to turn out to be a nothing burger. Anyway, so moving on to an orchid that I did want to show you just in case she's not going to be around anymore, which, oh, please don't. No, I don't want to lose this one. This is Podangus dactyloteras. This has me very, very concerned. Her leaves are very shriveled. Yes, she's growing a new leaf but I am sus about this. Her roots are still viable. They're absorbing, they're greening up. So I'm just hoping this is a strop because she has been too cold during the months of January, February. This is very concerning. So I just wanted to throw that out there and ask you to please keep your fingers crossed. Once again, I'm going to say, please keep your fingers crossed for this orchid. If I have to choose between a Tulumnia and my Podangus, please keep your fingers crossed for my Podangus. And while you're at it, would you mind hitting that like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you aren't subscribed yet that would be amazing thank you so so much and then I wanted to also show you that the repot, the winter repot of Malalia perinii is proving successful. The roots that we started out with have definitely extended and gone into the pot. Happy days. <laughs> it's never a good idea to have to repot an orchid during the winter months when conditions aren't exactly ideal, but needs must for this orchid. And we did it. 
Righty ho. Okay, top shelf of the west side at the moment are my Ancelia Africanas. I want to tell you that my Puff Out Across with Joe has two spikes. Now, unfortunately, I can say only two spikes. I was hoping for maybe four spikes at least. It's a big orchid. Hmm, didn't work out this time around, but we are going to have a first time bloomer bar any accidents and anything breaking the spike not including myself, and that is my Kenya Mud crossed with self. She has a spike. It will be exciting to see her in bloom. My OG Ancelia, not a light, not a single spike, despite her size. <laughs> okay, but it's going to be exciting to see the Kenya Mud crossed with self for the first time. But for the second time in bloom is my Buffalo crossed with Leo. Only one spike, but look at this spike. Wow, last year we had two spikes but they were definitely not all this bunched up. But do you remember me singing bright copper blooms and their warm colored buddies? <laughs> I tried, I tried. I hope it wasn't an epic fail. Oh, she's gorgeous. She smells like dusty sugar. If that is a smell you can relate to, dusty sugar. So she does have a sweet fragrance. It is very faint, but there's a dusty note to it. And no, not the dust that is in the air that I talked about just a moment ago. Not that kind of a dust fragrance, because yes, that also has a fragrance. This one is a different dust fragrance. <laughs> and surprise, surprise, I still have my fifth spike of plumatum in bloom. Oh, I'm proud of myself. I even moved the orchid today. <laughs> yes, I'm giggly because when I'm proud of myself, I get this way. <laughs> Considering that the first four spikes were a fail and it was always my fault four times in a row. So spike number five is still in bloom. I do not have a stinky fragrance at all. As a matter of fact, I don't have a fragrance, so I don't know what the trick is with this one. Maybe it's because she looks like beef jerky. She might be attracting flies. Who knows? Anyway, as a representation of all my Phalaenopsis that are going to be coming into bloom very, very soon, do you remember her? This is my dumpster Phalaenopsis, the one I found two years ago by the dumpster in the roasting August sun on concrete floor. Best spike ever. So cute. But yes, my pulsation represents a future video when all the fowls are in bloom. Now, I have been shuffling around in my blooming alley because of all the dust in the air and the inclement weather that is forecast. Ooh, scary times ahead. Towels are at the ready indoors, but I brought all my blooms into the blooming alley because clearly that is what it is for. It's for the blooms, for all the orchids in bloom. And I would love to say the blooming alley is officially open, but we're going to just tone it down a little bit and say the blooming alley is temporarily open with all the representation of what goodness is in bloom this time of year. And just a little sneak cameo to the top right of the screen is my Lelia Harpophila. Know that I appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching and for staying to the end. I get to wish you a beautiful day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.